Okay, hi everyone. So today we're going to be talking about a cerebrovascular accident. And so what is a cerebrovascular accident? Well, let's take a look at this term in itself. Cerebral means the brain. Vascular means it's the circulatory system. And we've had an accident. So something's gone wrong, right? What happens in an accident? Something's gone wrong. In this case, in a cerebrovascular accident, a, the blood supply to the brain has been cut off. This is more commonly known as a stroke. So a lot of people think the term stroke is just another name for a heart attack. But in actuality, like I just said, the blood supply to the brain has been cut off. And let's take a look at this. So what will happen here now is when we cut off the blood supply to the brain, what will happen is um, nerves in the brain start to die. Okay, so they're going to die. So nerves in the brain die. So let's take a look at what occurs in a stroke. Well, first, there's two types of stroke. The first type is called a hemorrhagic stroke. And we're going to be looking at this in just a minute. In a hemorrhagic stroke, what occurs is that you have blood vessels that break open. And that's why the blood supply to the brain is cut off. So in this one, BB stands for blood vessels. Blood vessels break open. And in the second type, we call it an ischemic stroke. And in this one, what's going to happen is the blood supply to the brain is going to be blocked. Something's going to block the blood vessel so it cannot deliver blood to the brain. So the blood supply is cut off. Due to blockage. Okay, so there's our two types of stroke. And now let's take a look at these. One last thing also, really quick. A cerebral vascular accident, another term for it, is just simply CVA. Cerebral vascular accident. So I am going to draw a brain. Okay, and this is my brain right here. And the blood to the brain actually comes from the neck up into the head. But for the interest of space, because I don't have a bunch of space right here, I'm going to draw it as if it comes from the back of the head. Okay, so your blood vessels are kind of wide. Your arteries are kind of wide. Okay, so here's my artery right here. Right? And then what's going to happen is this is going to get smaller. Okay, in fact, I'm going to redraw this. I'm going to make this a lot bigger. And so what's going to happen then is it's going to come in and then blood vessels just have a tendency to get smaller. So here's my smaller blood vessel here. In a hemorrhagic, in a hemorrhagic stroke, here's what's going to happen is as people eat high cholesterol diets and they smoke and they don't exercise, you can start to get something called thrombosis building up on the inside of a blood vessel. So let's go ahead and just put this in here. And here's my thrombosis building up. Okay, and as the blood vessel, as this starts to build up, what's going to happen is I still have blood that's coming in this way. As this builds up now, the blood has to go to a smaller and smaller opening. And what's going to happen is because all the blood cannot get through here, it has to go somewhere, especially as this starts to close more and more. So the blood is actually going to now start to put pressure against the sides of the blood vessel. And when that happens, eventually, the blood, the blood vessel is going to basically not pop, but what will happen is it will form a little bubble. And what we call this is an aneurysm. So an aneurysm is like a little bubble that you get inside of a blood vessel. 
as time goes on, this is going to continue closing down. And what can happen is I'm going to get more and more pressure against this aneurysm. And eventually the aneurysm may break. And when this breaks open now, blood comes out of the bloodstream. So now instead of blood going to the brain, it's just leaking out. It's like getting a, uh, a leak in a pipe. Or it's like getting a hole in your a bicycle tire. So now, once this happens, I can't get blood to the, this part of my brain. It can happen anywhere in the brain, I just can't get blood there. And so what's going to occur now is these nerves will start to die. And we call this necrosis. Okay, so I'm going to get necrosis in this part of my brain right here. And again, this can occur anywhere in the brain. I'm just drawing it right here. The second thing that can happen is let's say that this doesn't occur. All right, so this part of my blood vessel stays okay. But I still have this thrombosis here. And the thrombosis, what can occur is a piece of this can break off. And it can travel in the bloodstream, let's say it's, it's this right here, and then what it can do is it can block the blood vessels as they get smaller. When a piece breaks off, like we said, oops, I forgot to write this, this was called thrombosis. Okay, that's called thrombosis. Thrombosis is basically another term for um, a, black, a blood clot, but this is due to plaque building up on the walls of the arteries. When this is traveling in the bloodstream, it's called an embolus. So I get a piece of my thrombosis breaks, down, breaks off. It becomes an embolus, and then it's going to travel, and eventually it gets caught. I know I have it a lot bigger here. That's just for demonstration. So a piece broke off, and then it's going to get stuck. Okay? When it gets stuck, it's called an embolism. Okay? So when a piece of my thrombosis, and it doesn't have to be thrombosis, it can be anything that gets into the bloodstream and travels. But when my thrombosis breaks off and it's traveling, it's called an embolus. And when it gets stuck, it's called an embolism. Now what can happen here with this embolism is once again, let's just say I don't even have that much of my thrombosis here. This gets stuck. Now I got blood coming that wants to get past here and it can't, it has to go somewhere. So it starts to push against the walls and creates an, an aneurysm again, right? There's our aneurysm again. And it's the same exact thing here. Eventually this burst open, the blood starts to leak out. You might've heard sometimes people are told they have blood on the brain. This is, would be blood on the brain because of the fact that I had an aneurysm that's broken open and blood's leaking out, okay? So these can lead to strokes too. Now, so that's my hemorrhagic strokes. If you notice, in both of these, when I did it here and I did it here, we said that the blood vessels broke open. Now, let's take a look at what else can happen. I can also get a situation where I don't get the aneurysm. So let's say my blood vessels are okay. Okay, here's my blood vessel here. Here's my blood vessel here. And what happens instead here is I continue to get my thrombosis and it continues to build up and build up and build up. So what's going to happen now is it's going to block the blood supply altogether. So now the blood cannot get past it at all. It's like the road is closed. When that happens, there's no embolism here yet. When that happens, Again, the blood supply is cut off, and then we're gonna get the tissue death in here. So, by the way, again, it's called necrosis. All right, so when, the, when there is tissue death or cell death due to the blood supply being cut off, that's called ischemia. And that's why they call this ischemic necrosis, because I'm getting tissue death due to the blood supply being cut off. Hemorrhagic stroke, again, is because the blood vessel broke open. So I can have that happen here and I, with my thrombosis building up. Now, once again, let's say the thrombosis does not build up, but something breaks off somewhere in the body. It, it could just be an area where I don't even have that much thrombosis. It travels in the blood. 
Now it gets stuck in the brain. And once again, here comes my, here comes my blood and it can't get crossed. It can't get through here. And because of that, I get my necrosis once again. So again, in ischemic stroke, the blood supply is cut off due to blockage. In a hemorrhagic stroke, the blood supply is, is decreased or cut off because of the fact that we had a hemorrhage somewhere in a blood vessel. So let's talk about the signs of a stroke. <clears throat> so the co most common uh, mnemonic is the word fast. So let's look at this real quick. We have facial paralysis. And facial paralysis, normally it's going to be on one side of the face is going to become paralyzed. This is often can be um, misdiagnosed as Bell's palsy. Normally, if someone has Bell's palsy, you automatically assume they're having a stroke and you treat that first or treat for a stroke first. And then if you can determine that there is no stroke, then you diagnose the Bell's palsy. But in this case, I get the facial paralysis. I can get arm weakness. Normally, the arm weakness is on one side also. I can get, um, we call it dysphagia. Dysphasia. Dysphasia is difficulty speaking. Okay, and if you notice, it has an S in it. S is for speaking, because in a minute we're going to talk about dysphagia. And then the other thing is, is they say if you have these three symptoms, it's time to call. Okay, so. I should have put the speech problems here. Okay, so we have speech problems. So if you look, what's happening here is we have facial paralysis, we have arm weakness, we have speech impediments, and we have, if, if they have these three, it's time to call for help. Normally, if you see this, you probably want to start looking into getting some help anyway, just to make sure. What are the long-term effects of a stroke? So when someone who's had a stroke, they can get hemiparesis. Hemiparesis means they've been paralyzed on one half of their body, right? They can get a clenched, a clenched fist, all right? Normally when you have a stroke, because you're affecting the nerves of the brain, you get something called spastic paralysis. So in spastic paralysis, the muscles contract. Okay, in spastic paralysis, the muscles contract. So my muscles contract. If I get paralysis due to anywhere else in the body, such as the spinal cord or in the peripheral nervous system outside the spinal cord, I'm gonna get flaccid paralysis and things just become weak and kind of just hang there. Spastic paralysis, a lot of times these people actually clinch their fist up to their chest. I can get drooping of the drooping of the corner of the mouth. And um, with this, it's not uncommon to have drooling with it. Okay, so those are other things that can occur. And then, like we just said here, dysphasia, this is difficulty speaking. So I'm gonna put dysphasia. Here's my dysphasia. That's my difficulty speaking. Another thing I may have difficulty swallowing. Difficulty swallowing is called dysphasia. And I always remember it has a G in it because that, like the word gluttony means to eat. In this case, it's hard to eat. So I'm gonna get dysphasia, which is difficulty swallowing. Okay, and then the last one obviously is death. Okay, unfortunately stroke can be um, extremely deadly. So that's it for cerebrovascular accidents or strokes. 
And if you like this video, please check out my other videos, which are right here.